Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. A good early evening, I suppose. Welcome to Stacia, aka Sent You Stacious. We are here in the Piper Warrior 2 by Just Flight. Um, really cool. I just want to show you before I start the flight. I don't know why the lights are on, but they are. Um, this is a freeware airport. Like, somebody did this for free. This is just a really cool job, and so I figured I would, uh... Figured I would show you guys real quick. I'm trying to figure out why my uh, wingtip lights are on, my, my nav lights are on, but no matter. Let's get in the airplane and get going. Uh, why is any of this stuff on? Alright, uh, so there's clearly something odd happening because uh, I just had a flight that got messed up and I had to restart it. So let's take it from the top. Rotating beacon on, mixture rich, carby is cold, master and battery switch is on, fuel pump on, hello, FSUIPC, fuel pump on. Throttle open a quarter inch. Let's go. Mags on both. Let's make sure there's nobody out here to kill or maim. And of course, for whatever reason with this airplane, you have to use the mouse to start the... to actually engage the starter. Alright. 1200 is what we're looking for for engine warm up on the RPM. Oil pressure is looking good. Fuel pressure is good. Let's turn the fuel pump off. Fuel pressure is fine. Nav and strobe lights on. Avionics master is on. Um, I'm going to turn the lights on because. Um, the panel lights because it's it's not dark by any stretch of the imagination but it's starting to get a little bit where I think those panel lights will be helpful to be lazy and hit the B key so we can get our local altimeter setting alright let's go my no I don't know. My favorite uh, my favorite transponder setting. 4643. Don't ask me why it's my favorite transponder setting. It just is. Um, Alright, let's go to the Seven here. Let's go here. We'll bring this out just a little bit. Mixture lean for taxi. I should have done that already. All right, taxi light on. Let's uh, release the parking brake. How are my? There we go. All right, release the parking brake. Uh, let's get the airplane rolling. Test the brakes. All right, now. I'm going to do kind of a quick start. I told myself the other day I need to get back into the habit of doing engine run-ups and flight control checks before taking off because I want to... Part of the reason why I want to fly this airplane is because I want to um, instill good habits or ingrain good habits in my measly little brain. So this is... not the longest runway in the world, in which case I'm actually going to back taxi this runway because that's one thing you should always do is use the full length for the departure. Alright, 122.8. Um, Stacia traffic, Cherokee 56125, back taxiing runway 06, full length the departure, Stacia. 
Um, they say there's three things that are useless to you as a pilot. One of them is the runway behind you. One of them is the altitude above you. And the other thing is fuel in the fuel tanks at the fuel pump at the airport you just left. In other words, uh, actually I need to turn my landing light on because I want to be visible on the runway. Um, in other words, if I had just taken off without back taxiing this runway, then this portion of runway that I am on right now is of no use to me because I, I don't have the advantage of having a little bit more runway to land on if I need it. Uh, I see the turnaround is here to the right. I don't like turnarounds to the right. I like turnarounds to the left. But that's the way it is. Um, the altitude above you is no good for you because you cannot trade it for airspeed in case of power problem. Uh, and the other thing that's not of any use to you is the fuel in the tanks at the airport you left because that fuel is not in your airplane. So let's go mixture rich carby coal lights are on. Let's go fuel pump on. All right. Um, station traffic Cherokee 56125 departing runway six left crosswind departure to the north station. Uh, eventually I'm going to have to figure out why there is no traffic <laughs> anywhere with where I fly. But let's get ourselves lined up here. I just don't see any traffic. Um, Alright, heading indicator checks with the runway number. On course heading is 009, so it's basically direct north. Alright, takeoff power is coming in. Takeoff power is set. You want at least 2350. Release the brakes. Oil pressure is in the green. Airspeed is alive. So many things I didn't do that I should do. Chief among them, check my trim. Check your trim for departure. here you see I'm drifting way left of center line that's because I've got that right crosswind but 400 feet AGL you can start your turn out that's an IFR rule it's just a good practice is the 400 foot turnout. When you're flying IFR, you should never make a turn before you can. I mean, I don't know if it's recommended or if it's a hard and fast rule. I think it's a hard and fast rule. Don't make a turnout below 400 feet. Alright, 1,000 feet AGL. Let's turn the fuel pump off. Let's check our fuel pressure. Fuel pressure is going to adjust. And look at this beautiful departure out of Stacia there, St. Kitts in the background. There's Saba off there in the, the distance legal out there. Alright. So it looks like we're on course here on our on the center line of our course to Anguilla. We get the nose down here a little bit. Two thousand climbing three thousand. down and trimming. Actually, get the nose down a little bit more. Cruise climb is where it's at right now. 
So, a couple of things that are in my feeble mind for this flight. First of which is um, this is DX12, 2500 climbing, 3000. This is a DX12. I think, and I may be wrong, that DX12 is the crisper than DX11. It kind of occurred to me the other day. <clears throat> altitude, pull the power back, push your nose over, pull the power back just enough so that you hear a decrease in the engine sound, and there's a couple pauses, so that's going to answer my question, um, now that you basically have it trimmed out, look at that, right at 2500, which is what I wanted, now let me get that down. Now that I'm a sort of established in cruise, I go fuel pump on, switch fuel tanks, fuel pump off, get back to the battle. Get back by the battle, I mean the battle to level the airplane. Um, so I just put in, I just installed the new studio driver for um, NVIDIA for my 1080. I was kind of thinking, I've, I'd read some things where people were saying that they found the studio driver to be better with DX12 and so I thought to myself I'd give it a shot I thought the the driver before just the, the current game ready driver did okay with um, with DX12, but um, I wanted to see what this one does. So, let's see if this is like. The story is here. Okay. Um, the other thing. that, uh, yeah, there's some pauses. Let's see what the performance is here. Performance is pretty solid. The thing I want to do is start leaning the mixture here. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah, I was pulling on the car, Pete. I swear one of these days I will figure it out. The whole reason why I added a lever, a car, Pete lever for my Honeycomb Bravo. Uh, was because of an incident that happened in a real airplane where I pulled the mixture or pulled the carpet rather but no actually I pulled the mixture instead of the carpet 
uh, which is bad because pulling the mixture means the engine is going to quit. Alright, that EGT has now reversed and is decreasing, so what I want to do is push the mixture lever forward I used it until we drop 50 degrees. Each line right there is 50 degrees. So, now that we've leaned the mixture, we're going to get a little better performance out of the engine, so we got to pull them. Pull the heat, uh, the power back a little bit there at the RPMs, uh, and we do not find it acceptable to be 200 feet above our cruising altitude, do we? No, we do not. So therefore, let's push the nose over here a little bit. Get back down to our cruise altitude. So, in the 27.3 nautical miles that I have to finish this thought process. Um, somebody over oh, there he is. Uh, the other thing that I kind of wanted to think about out loud. During this flight, and I and I need your advice if you are listening. Is what shall I do? What shall I do with my YouTube channel? Because I will admit that I shamelessly used my position in the beta post videos of the beta updates and how they were looking um, to kind of try and get a little attention for my measly little channel and I've kind of always thought that the thing to do with two things I'm kind of thinking about. Like, number one, I just fly flights that I enjoy. And... I record them. This would be a whole lot more boring for me if I didn't really have anything to do. In other words, if I didn't have you guys to converse with, I guess, is the way to put it. If I was just sitting here looking out the window, I'd probably get a little bit bored. Um, but because I have my imaginary friends, <laughs> um, you know, it kind of gives me something to do while I'm flying, just talk, and I never really plan out what I'm going to talk about, uh, except today, sort of. Um, you know, I like to throw a little bit of aviation knowledge in there, just like little tidbits that I'm thinking about as I'm flying. Um, so I'm sure that like probably some people who watch this are flight simmers and maybe not real pilots, like real world pilots, and they, you know, I, I kind of try to share a little bit of information, maybe be helpful. Uh, I'm going to go fly over the top of Julian Airport, because it's fun. Um, and anyway, I, I so... I think everybody has their own approach to these, like everybody who has like a flight sim YouTube channel. And you see people with, you know, 30,000, 50,000, 200,000 view, you know, subscribers and whatnot. And they've all kind of got their own shtick. Uh, 
which is good, you know, and mine is just kind of, I guess I really don't feel like I have a shtick, but like I just kind of enjoy flying, and or I really enjoy flying, and I just do flights that I would do anyway, and record them, and post them. And so I guess kind of the question that is in my mind is, like, is there anything in particular that you guys would find interesting that I might be able to do? Um, fuel pump on, switch fuel tanks. Yeah, this definitely did not include the amount of fuel that I put into to the airplane. But, like, you know, I, I flew jets a couple times. I flew the GR, CRJ a little bit, which I had fun learning, but it's not really my thing. Um, I love flying the Islander because it's kind of the highlight of my when I do go to Anguilla in real life which I'm setting up for another trip here pretty soon um, I love that part of the trip we always fly into St. Martin and then overfly and then fly over to, uh, to Anguilla on the uh, on the Islander. And I don't see a lot of people flying Islanders like in the sim, so maybe that's something that people would be interested in seeing more of. And then the other thing is, is I think it's important for me as a pilot to, to fly this airplane in particular, and maybe something a little bit more technologically advanced, maybe something a little bit faster. Um to benefit myself as a real world pilot like uh, my Cherokee the Cherokee that I fly in real life is actually coming out of, is actually out of the shop right now just put a Garmin GFC autopilot in it um, and so I'm going to be flying uh, a technologically advanced aircraft here very shortly in, in real life and I want to get back into like flying that type of airplane in the, in the sim with a glass, bit more of a glass cockpit um, and the other the very last thing so I'm, I guess the, the first question is what kind of things do people want to see that I enjoy doing. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna start like a. Like I'm not gonna start doing like London to JFK because people would want to watch that. Like there's already people who do that, and so there's no need for me to do it, right? Like I don't want to do it. It's not my thing. Um. And it's, you know. Princess Juliana traffic, Cherokee 56125, overflying the field, the midfield south to north at 3,000 feet, Juliana. Um, and the other question is, I don't really feel like my... Moniker, I guess it, it, it might be called Upstate Flyer, is reflective of what I do. Because most this is mostly has become mostly a flight sim channel. Like I originally started it like with nothing in mind. Like I didn't I didn't have a purpose for the channel. I just you know, put some golf videos, put some music stuff. Anguilla traffic, Cherokee 56125, 10 miles to the south, inbound runway 11, Anguilla. 
and put some, you know, some aviation videos. Let's go fuel pump on. Power back. Um, and now it's really become, for the most part, a, a flight sim channel. And I kind of feel like maybe I should change Uh, I don't know the name of the channel or the br sort of the branding of the channel to reflect that. And I have no idea what I would call it, like something to do with Car like something to do with Caribbean simulation because that's really what I do. Um, So if anybody has any thoughts on those two questions, or should I just keep doing what I'm doing? Just keep flying around, having fun. You know, and that's that. Just keep it simple. I mean, I'm not going to, I'm not going to not be simple <laughs> for sure, because I'm not going to get into big video productions. I mean, I, I see some people that put a lot of effort into the production side of Flight Sim. I'm not going to do that. Just don't have the time for it. It's not what I'm interested in. Um, but in terms of the actual, like, content, be interested to see what you guys think, what you're suggestions are I mean if everybody if the only thing people want to see is like you know complex approaches in the TBM and they happen to be me flying the Caribbean but that's not really the point that people really just want to see uh, complex airplanes being flown somewhat competently I'd be happy to do that sort of thing uh, I love flying the TBM. Flying the TBM is a blast. But uh, anyway, I'm just sort of curious what people think. Maybe people don't even care. So I can already tell you this driver is not the the big win that I was hoping it was going to be. Alright, let's start pulling the nose up. Uh, Anguilla traffic. Cherokee 56125, 5 mile right base, runway 11 Aquila. Alright, now let's trim that nose up here. Put in the first notch of flaps. Have a look down at Rendezvous Bay. This is uh, Aurora Anguilla, is the new. used to be Cuisinart. I think I must have sold a lot of blenders too, by the way. Um, the Cuisinart guy. But now Cuisinart is Aurora Aquila, which is great. Ah, look at that. So basically, I'm just curious if you guys think I should do anything else. And if in any way I should, like, rebrand myself or rebrand this channel. Let's start getting down here. I can 
can tell you already, this is going to be a battle. Yep, this is going to be a battle. And Anguilla traffic, Cherokee 56125, two mile final runway 11, Anguilla. So now, gotta get to the flying part of today's program. Mixture rich car peak, cold fuel pump is on, seat belts. Let's hope they're secure. That's always your pre landing checklist in a Cherokee. Two pump on, mixtures rich, car be cold, uh, seatbelt secure. Alright, this is going to be a wrestling match, I can tell you already. Whoa. Okay. Definitely not going full flaps. Alright. I'm glad slow bear speed's alright. Definitely don't want to get low energy here with I mean look at this. This is this is patently ridiculous. Really is. Last notch of flaps coming in. Power coming out a little bit. was a bit of a flat landing but uh, I, I was trying to hold the nose up and just keep keep bleeding off speed and then I was going to kick out the crab but didn't really make it that far landed a little flat but I mean that that whole situation there coming down final was that was easy I mean I thought for a while that it had gotten better but that was clearly that was the worst turbulence I've ever experienced on final here and I mean I think that's more than a bit of overkill So we're clear the runway. Anguilla traffic, Anguilla, uh, Cherokee 56125, clear the runway, Anguilla. All right, let's put the flaps up. Let's turn the fuel pump off. Mixture is lean for taxi. All right, uh, yeah, I mean, that was honestly completely ridiculous. Uh, in my opinion, as far as as far as turbulence on final goes, that was just absurd. Uh, I'm gonna turn my landing light off too, so I don't blind the poor soul who might be. Uh, We might be uh, parking airplanes this evening. Uh, yeah, I mean, that was just crazy. Alright, throttle's idle. Mixture idle. Cut off. Let's set the parking brake. Turn our lights off. Uh, turn this. Uh, okay, that's off. Uh, avionics master off, magnetos off, 
master and battery switches off so all the lights are off fuel pumps off all that fun business uh, and there we get out we depart the aircraft um, so here we are back home in Anguilla so let me know what you think I mean uh, if you didn't watch the video and just watch the end of it well my question was what kind of flying would you like to see um, you know fly in the TBM more fly the uh, Islander more fly the, the, the Warrior the Cherokee like I've been doing what kind of flying do you like to see um, do you like to see more complex approaches do you like to see the visuals that uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator has to offer do you like to see you know the trips around to the little airports in the Caribbean the kind of thing I tend to do or do you like more like complex IFR stuff and should I rebrand the channel to be a little bit more in tune with what I actually do there's upstate flyer there's nothing upstate about here upstate refers to upstate New York which is where I live which is uh which is not anywhere near Anguilla or any place else I fly to in the, in the, in the sim. So maybe I need to rebrand my channel to be more reflective of what I do. Anyway, I would appreciate anybody's feedback. And I hope you guys are doing well. And I will see you next flight.